Good morning! In this video series we are back testing a grid trading system with Python. What you are seeing here is a visualized grid trading system. It is actually quite straightforward. So you have a certain benchmark, in this case the price of now. And you are buying when the price slightly drops. And then you are selling when the price is above a certain threshold again. Anyhow, if the price drops further, you are buying again. And if the price then climbs again, you are selling for the previous buy level. Let's take a look at how am I designing it. So our benchmark is always the open price. So let's take an easy example. Your open price for the day is 1000 and on this you apply your levels. So you would buy at 9 and 8 and you would sell at 1002. However, if the price drops, you are buying again at 996 and you are selling this one at 9 and 8 again. So essentially, we are taking a look at very granular intraday movements and see if those levels are being hit within a day. Before we are getting started, important disclaimer concept shown in this video or not an investment advice video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. All right, so let's get started. What I coded until now is pulling minute granular intraday Bitcoin prices starting from beginning of the year. I've covered how to set up this function in a previous video, which I will link below. When you let this run for yourself, you need to be a bit patient, roughly takes two to four minutes, cause it is pulling quite some data. So let's take a look at that. You see roughly 70K rows, minute granular price data for the Bitcoin. First, I wanna extract the daily open prices. As this is minute granular, I need to resample that on a daily base. Take the first value and then just screen for the open. And with that, I have my daily open prices. So date here as the index, open as the values here. So let's store that in opens. And just as a reminder, as I explained in the beginning, my open is my benchmark where I apply my levels on, right? So for the first level, I'm taking 99.8% of this open on the first day. All right. So the levels function I'm going to set up now, get levels. This is taking a certain date and the information if it is the first level or not. So this is by default true. And if it's the first level, I just return my opens series screen for the date. So let's say 1st January. And then I'm taking this value. So in the 1st January case, this value times the level. So first level was 99.8%. Also, I'm going to screen for the date again and then apply my target profit. So this is the uh, first selling level here, right? As simple as that. And if it's not my first level, I'm returning open screen for the date times and then the second level. So in our case, 99.6%. And in the other case, so this is buying, this is selling, buying, selling, right? And as I said in the beginning, I'm selling on the buy level here. So this is the same as this. So I simply can copy paste here. All right, so what is this function doing? It is providing me my price level for a given date. So let's call that for January. So this is my buying threshold for January and this is my selling threshold for January. If I'm setting the argument first false, I'm getting my buying level for the second level and my selling level for the second level. Right, so this is the same as the buying level on the first level, okay? Okay, now let's test that for just one level first, right? We are doing it step by step. But, but before doing so, let's set up a function which is slicing our data frame, so this one here, for a particular date. So I wanna have the minute data for only a given date, right? So 
I'm going to call that slice df, takes date as an argument. And this is simply returning me uh, my data frame and then the date of that data frame. So the index is just the minute values. If I take the date, I'm getting what date this row is belonging to. And I'm simply screening for the provided date transformed as a date time or as a, a timestamp here. So this is very simple. This is just uh, giving you the data frame for the first January here. So you see starting point at the first minute of January until the last minute of January, right? Also for the second one, first minute of the second one, last minute of this, the second one and so on. So let's play it through. Let's just create a test data frame, DFT or a slice data frame, calling this function slice df. Let's just take the first January here. Right, so this is just the January um, minutes here. And now we wanna code on the first level first. So I'm going to set up a position flag here. If in, uh, in position is false, keeping track of if I'm in a position or not. And then I'm looping for index row in DFT it rows. So this is simply looping over uh, every row in the DFT data frame. And now if I'm not in a position, I'm pulling my price levels. So I'm just calling that levels here, call my get levels function for the first January. And with that, I have my levels. And now I can check if my low row value is smaller or equal to my buying level. So I'm simply extracting the first element of the array. So this one here, this is my buying level, this is my selling level. So if the row is below that, I know that uh, the price was existent on that day, right? And then I want to print out buy and I also want to set my position flag to true as I'm in a position now. If I'm in a position, then I'm basically doing the exact same as I'm doing here, but the other way around. So I'm checking if my high is larger or equal to my selling level. Because with that, then I know that the price was actually existent. So I could have sold for that price on that day. I print sold and set my in position or my position flag to false as I'm not in a position anymore when I sold. So let's execute that. And I messed up somewhere. Yeah, I forgot an if here, of course. And then you are actually on the 1st January getting a buying and selling signal here, right? So let's find out where it is by simply printing out the index here. Print index. So we bought at uh, 037. So let's take a look at where that roughly was in the data frame. So just screening our minute granular data frame for that timestamp. Let's go two minutes before and do a quick ascent check here. So we need our levels of course as well. So I'm just going to call that here. So these are our buying and selling levels. And now let's check for 37. And now you see that here we actually are below our buying level, right? So here we would have bought. Same for the selling logic here. So let's screen for 16 here, 16.2 we should have sold. So here the high is actually above my selling level. Simple as that, right? I hope this is clear so far. And now let's get to the harder part, integrating the second level, right? So for the second level, 
we want to work with a position array instead of a position flag. So this is just initially containing false and false. And this is keeping track of the first buy. And this is keeping track of the second buy, right? Now, to make things easier, I'm setting the date as uh, January for now. And I'm setting my test data frame to the slice df um, function and the provided date here, right? So with that, we are making sure that we are actually looping over the right thing. And now same as before for index row in DFT, it rows. And now we are first of all checking if we are not in our first buy position. So if not position array screen for the first element. And then if we are not in a position, we want to calculate our levels. So I'm going to calculate the first levels by simply calling get levels on the given date, which is 1st January still. And then second levels, calling the function again on the date and then set first to false. Okay, with that, I have my first levels and my second levels here. And if I'm not in a position, I, I'm checking the same as before again, right? I check if my low is smaller or equal to the first element of the first levels array, right? Just as a recap, this is simply uh, the first element, which is the buying level. So if that's the case, I'm printing buy. And then if I bought, I'm setting the position array element to true, because now I'm in a position on the first level. Now it's getting interesting. Now the next check is if I'm in a position on the first level, but I'm not in a position on my second level, right? And here I have to implement two checks, right? The first check is my buying check here, right? So my first check is if my is my row my my low my rows low sorry small or equal to the second levels buy price so that was the ninety nine dot six then I print buy second and if that's the case I bought right so I'm setting my position array second element to true as I'm in a second position now. I also have to check for my first position, right? So I have to check if my high is larger or equal to first levels one. This is my selling element in the array. So uh, this one here. And if the high is above or equal to the first level, I want to print sell and I'm setting my first element in the position array to false as I'm not in a position anymore and I sold. Now finally, I still have to take care of my second position array. So if I'm in a position in my second level, I'm checking if the high is larger or equal to second levels one. So the selling element. And then I'm printing sell second and set the position array to false. All right, so if we're executing that, we're getting for the first January, interestingly, no second level values. And now let's do a sense check, right? How can we do it? a sense check? We can take a look at the uh, second levels and see if our data frame is actually not going below this value, because otherwise we made something wrong. If, if it does, it has to buy here, right? So if I'm taking the low and then the minimum, I'm getting this as the, the lowest value on that day. 
And as you see, the second level is lower than that, right? So the low was never, or the price in general, was never lower or equal to that value. So it is perfectly fine that we are not getting a second level value here, right? So if you are taking a look at the first levels now again, you can also do the sense check here, but you see that we have a, a minimum value, this one here, and now it is actually fitting, right? So this is lower than uh, this value here, but this is not lower than this value. So first level, perfectly fine. Second level wasn't hit. Now let's play that for the next days. Maybe we are lucky here. So 2nd January, yes, we have a, a second buy and second sell here, right? So we bought, then we uh, bought on the lower level, then we sold when it's going up again, and we even sold uh, on the highest level once again. Perfectly works, all right? Now next one, we are getting a very interesting case now. Now we bought, we bought the second, we sold the second, but what about the uh, um, sell for the next one? That would happen on the next day, right? But on the next day, we need to make sure that we are still using the old levels because this buying signal is based on the previous day level, right? And this is something I will do in the follow-up video on this one. So there we are actually looping over all those uh, dates and then we are implementing this logic. In the end, we are also checking the performance of this grid trading uh, strategy here, right? So I hope until now that makes sense. Code it for yourself, try to understand every single line here. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Bye bye.